You've heard us say it all season long and you're gonna keep hearing it because it's fantasy playoff time. It's all about upside. Who has that high ceiling? Who could go off and help you single-handedly win this week? We're about to tell you. And before you set your lineup to help you win in the playoffs, don't forget to set your winning picks for underdog. If you haven't tried an underdog yet, well, here's the winning pick. It's a free one on Thursday night, Brock Purdy, just getting one yard. That's right, if you sign up for the first time on Underdog, you get this free pick, Brock Purdy. Take higher than 0.5 total yards. Just make sure you use code ENDGAME when you sign up because you get the free pick and you still get a 50% deposit match which gets you up to $1,000 worth of bonus cash. So for week 15, who's your very first boom pick, Chris? My very first boom pick and the guy who could possibly help you win your week this week if you're still in the playoffs with him is Tyree Kill. Now it has not been the season we expected from Tyree Kill this year, of course. Has not lived up to a top three draft pick. But you look at over the last four games, he kind of is getting close to it. He's got at least 19 or more PPR points in three of the last four games. The only game he was under 19 PPR points was against New England and stud corner Christian Gonzalez. We don't have to worry about that this week. He is this terrible Houston secondary who are now allowing the fourth most points to wide receivers. Their stud safety, Jalen Petrie, is lost for the season with a pec tear, so the secondary has even gotten worse. And you look at over the last three games, they've allowed at least 196 yards to wide receivers. That includes 98 yards to CeeDee Lamb, 93 yards to Calvin Ridley, and right before the bye, Parker Washington and Brian Thomas Jr. combined for 179 yards with Mac Jones. This secondary cannot stop any wide receivers. Tua is absolutely rolling right now. Tyreek Hill looks like he's getting close to the guy we expected him to be. I think we see vintage Tyreek Hill this week. But I will say this, even if you don't have Tyreek Hill, I think you've got to take his line on underdog right now. I'm going to take higher than five and a half receptions. He's gone at least five catches over the last four games. Again, the only game where he didn't get over five catches was that game against Christian Gonzalez when he got exactly five catches. I think he smashes this. You pair that with that Brock Purdy free pick tonight, and that's a great way to win right off the bat. Just make sure you join using promo code ENDGAME to get that free pick and up to $1,000 in bonus cash. Well, this week it feels like we've had a lot of these Devo receivers complaining about not getting the ball enough. A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel, and we wonder, is there a squeaky wheel going to go on here where these guys are going to be forced targets their way? You know who didn't complain, though, was T. Higgins, because Jamar Chase, while he was going bananas again on Monday Night Football, T. Higgins wound up with only two catches for 23 yards, and you got to wonder, because T. Higgins set to be a free agent this coming season, but an interesting thing happened after the game. T. Higgins didn't say anything about that, not getting the ball enough, only targeted five times, while again, Jamar Chase was doing everything. Joe Burrow said something, and he said something he totally didn't have to out of the blue about doing everything they can to keep T. Higgins next year. I feel like this is leading to, I guess, a squeaky wheel game for T. Higgins, and look, I know that I don't necessarily want to promote a narrative over the numbers, but T. Higgins has been dominant until that game, and this is his homecoming game. He's going to be in Tennessee, not only where he played college, but also where he grew up. It's going to be a get-right game for T. Higgins, and also this is a game where going against the Tennessee Titans secondary that I know has been really good all season. In fact, they are still third best in terms of limiting fantasy points against wide receivers, but I've been sounding the alarm on this. Things have changed. They lost Legereus Sneed. He's on IR. Roger McCreary, other corner, is questionable. He's been banged up. And over the last four weeks, Tennessee is only 18th against wide receivers. They've been giving up some big games in a passing area in terms of receivers having productive output. And so I think T. Higgins is a guy who's bound to get back to that wide receiver two, maybe even low end wide receiver one status this week. So don't be discouraged from last week. The T. Higgins, I think he's still borderline must start. We got plenty more boom picks, but first don't forget, if you like this video, if you feel like we're helping you out, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe before you go. All right, who's another high-end wide receiver is going to give us high-end production this week? Cortland Sutton has been giving us high-end production pretty much most of the year, and I think it's going to continue this week, definitely. You look at it since week seven, he's only gone under 17 PPR points one time, and he scored 14.8 PPR points in that game. This guy has been an absolute stud pretty much week in and week out over the second half of the season. Over that stretch of games, he has eight or more targets in every single game, 
and he has nine or more targets in all but one of those games. He's always a threat to score a touchdown. He's always a red zone threat here. I really like Bo Nix this week in this matchup at home against the Colts. And by extension, I love Corlin Sutton because Corlin Sutton is Bo Nix's number one target. He might really be his number one, number two, and number three target in this offense. There is literally nobody else. Now, the Colts on paper are not the weakest defense against wide receivers, but they're definitely not the strongest against wide receivers, and they're significantly worse against outside wide receivers than they are against slot wide receivers. I think this is going to be a monster game from Corden Sutton this week. Maybe 100 yards, maybe a touchdown, six, seven, eight catches. This is a huge Corden Sutton week. you got to start Corden Sutton. I think, like you said with T. Higgins, borderline must start. I think Cortland Sutton also a borderline must start this week. Well, I got another receiver who's definitely the top target for his team coming off a of bye. He didn't have Terry McLaurin last week. He's going to go against the Saints. And no, I'm still not in any way impressed by the Saints defense. Don't be fooled by the fact that they didn't give up many points last week. That was against the Giants and Drew Locke. And sure, they're fighting harder now under Darren Rizzi. They're still a bad defense and they're going to get worse because their offense is worse because they just lost their starting quarterback. The Saints allow the fifth most yards to wide receivers and Terry McLaurin is going to have a field day here. And Terry, remember, there was a time where we were getting a little nervous about him. He had that one game with one catch for 10 yards and then he would have probably had another very disappointing game if not for that. Kind of fluky, uh, ridiculous last minute touchdown against the Cowboys. But all in all, since that one catch performance, 13 catches on 14 targets, and he scored three touchdowns in the last two games before the bye. And look, with wide receiver Noah Brown now out for the season, they're just going to have to lean on Terry even more. I feel like this is going to be one of his biggest games of the season. All right, now when the decisions get even tougher, these are guys you're just not sure whether you should play or not. We're going to tell you, yeah, this week you have to do it. Yeah, this week you have to play Brian Robinson Jr., if at all possible. Coming off a big game before the team's bye, and now he gets this terrible Saints defense. Like you said, they are still terrible, and they are still terrible against the run. They're allowing the highest yards per carry in the entire NFL they're allowing the second highest touchdowns per game to running backs and the ninth highest rushing yards per game to running backs. If you look at Brian Robinson, he's been kind of up and down this year, but it's really only because he hasn't been healthy. If you look at the games where he's actually been healthy, where he's had at least 16 carries, and he's done that in six games this year, he's gone over 100 yards in three of those games. He's only gone under 60 yards in one of those games. And he scored a touchdown, at least one touchdown, in all but one of those games. When Brian Robinson is fully healthy, good to go, he has been nothing but awesome this year. Now you got to think, coming out of the bye, he's going to be fully healthy, good to go, going against the Saints defense. I think he's going to be awesome again here in Week 15. Obviously, if you have two incredible running backs, maybe you can't squeeze Brian Robinson into your lineup. But if you have question marks at your RB2 slot in any way whatsoever, I think Brian Robinson Jr. is a borderline must start this week in week 15. And I feel the same way about Chuba Hubbard. Again, so many running backs have been good and so many running backs have managed to avoid getting injured. Again, this is always going to be a tough call when you're going to compare him with other guys. You really thought you were just going to start all season long, like a Jonathan Taylor, you know, a Brees Hall, if he even plays. But look, I'm locking Chuba in my lineup for a couple of reasons. First of all, I had him on my top 12 playoff running back list, which again, might be a little controversial because there's so many good running backs. How do you fit a guy like Hubbard in there? I did partly because of the schedule and partly because he was the workhorse. Then rookie Jonathan Brooks came along and all of a sudden started getting some touches, especially in the passing game. And there was some concern. Well, as you know, that's definitely not a concern anymore. Jonathan Brooks, unfortunately, another ACL injury. He's done. And so it's all Chuba now. It just so happens also Raheem Blackshear, another backup running back there, is hurt. Miles Sanders has been hurt. It's all Chuba. I mean, literally, he's the only running back that's going to touch the ball here now. And that includes in the passing game. We saw it last week, 26 carries and four catches. There are not that many running backs, as good as they are, that are getting that kind of workload. And now he gets the Cowboys. And yes, the Cowboys, of course, are bad against the run still. Sixth most fantasy points per game given up to running backs. They're not slowing anybody down. So Chuba Hubbard is going to get an insane amount of touches going against a soft defense. I mean, Chuba Hubbard is one of those guys that even though you might be tempted to put a bigger name, you know, running back or a guy who's on a better offense in instead, 
I think Hubbard is the play. And again, when it comes to making those tough decisions, you have to take the name out of the equation. You have to look at the numbers. So with that said, Chris, who's your next boom? I, I hate this. I hate that I have to talk about this player on the booms. I hate that he has the potential to boom this week. I hate that it's 2024. And I'm still watching Aaron Rodgers throw passes to Devontae Adams. But it's 2024, and I'm still watching Aaron Rodgers throw passes to Devontae Adams, even if it's in a Jets uniform. And Devontae Adams, sadly, well, not sadly if you have Devontae Adams, but Devontae Adams is absolutely going to smash this week. He's in an absolute smash spot. In four of the last five games, Devontae Adams has 11 or more targets. That is just absolutely insane to me when you have a guy like Garen Wilson on your roster that Devontae Adams is getting 11 targets, but, you know, Aaron Rodgers just looks his way over and over. But even more crazy to me that it was just, like, shocking to me when I looked up the numbers, over that stretch, he ranks third among all wide receivers in targets inside the 10. Aaron Rodgers isn't just looking for this guy between the 20s. He's looking for this guy near the end zone. He wants to get this guy touchdowns. He is force feeding the ball to Devontae Adams. And this week, he gets the Jacksonville Jaguars who are sixth worst against wide receivers. I hate that it's the fantasy playoffs and it's 2024. And I'm still talking about the Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams connection on the Jets. But I unfortunately have to talk about it because it's real, it's here, and it's probably going to happen in week 15, whether we want it to or not. Well, let's throw another former Packer in the mix, teammate of these two guys. No, don't worry, it's not Alan Lazard. Let's go to Aaron Jones again. And this one's simple. Why Aaron Jones? He gets the Bears. And as you know, he is co-owner of the Bears franchise. Every time, every time recently at least, when he plays Chicago Bears, he has a big game. And it just happened a couple of weeks ago against this Chicago defense. Jones ran for 106 yards and a touchdown. Now, Jones also recently has been hard to kind of pin down for start-sit decisions because, of course, there's that two-fumble game that led to his kind of temporary benching and his mother getting after him on social media and all that. Well, he's fine now. Didn't fumble last game. Back to looking normal. Look, he didn't put up big numbers, but really that's because they were just having so much fun throwing the ball. They didn't need to run the ball that much. He still averaged over five yards a carry, and he's going to get this Bears defense that not only does he run well against, but a lot of running backs run well against the Chicago Bears. They're one of the worst because they allow almost five yards per carry to running backs. They've already allowed five different running backs to go for 90 plus yards on the ground. This is a team that is just, you know, barely hanging on for the rest of the season to try to develop their quarterback Caleb Williams the defense has been solid for the most part but not against the run and I don't see that changing with Aaron Jones again very familiar setting and this week also at home in Minnesota and we know some of you still are streaming quarterback tight end or are you just looking for more upside at the position than what you got so let's give you some help here uh, let's start with the quarterback position yeah, it's going to be tough at the quarterback position this week, and I know we're going to get a lot of questions about Tua, and rightfully so. Since week 11, he is the second highest scoring quarterback behind only Josh Allen, and that is only because Josh Allen scored 50-plus points last week. He's tied with Sam Darnold for the most touchdown passes, second in terms of passing yards over that stretch. He has been absolutely fantastic. I already talked about this Houston defense, terrible against the pass, 10th worst against quarterbacks. Not to mention, they're in Houston in a dome, so there's no weather concerns at all. Tyreek looks better. He's got A-Chan out of the backfield. Waddle, Jonu Smith, he's got weapons here. This is a great spot for Tua. Now, I know we're going to get a lot of questions like, Tua or Jalen Hurts? Tua or Jaden Daniels? I mean, we might even get crazy questions like Tua or Lamar Jackson or something like that. I'll say this. I'm not starting him over those guys. But outside of the no doubt must starts, I'm starting Tua over every other quarterback this week. So if you've got Tua and you don't have one of those must starts, you have to start him. I'm definitely on board with that. Get the Tua Hill stack there. At tight end, things are still tough. I mean, it's hard to just find a guy on waivers that you really feel confident about. I'm going to go with a player that really doesn't have a good matchup. Let's just be honest here. But Pat Fryermuth should get a bump this week. And you might not have noticed he's been coming on lately anyways. So George Pickens didn't play last week. And it sounds like he's a very long shot to play this week. Yeah, Pat Fryermuth is going to have to get a bump because honestly, who else would? 
Calvin Austin last week, no, not even close. Mike Williams, sure, he actually caught more than one pass. He caught three passes for 36 yards. We're not gonna see vintage Mike Williams, whatever that is, anymore. This is an offense that's still gonna be conservative, and that means the leading receiver will probably be the tight end Pat Fryermuth. And this Eagles defense is for real. Let's, let's just be honest here. This is a tough matchup and not even against the tight end is it easy. They're a top 10 defense against tight ends, but the target share is going to be there. There really aren't any other tight ends that I could say you could pretty easily pick up off waivers and feel better about. And Pat Fryermuth, again, not just last week because of Pickens being out, but the past three weeks, Pat Fryermuth has seen his usage increase and he's been productive enough to start. He's averaged four catches and 58 yards with two touchdowns in the past three games, which again, it's not amazing, but compared to everything else on the waiver wire for tight end, it's pretty good. And I think he could do even better this week. You know, it's more important than ever to set that lineup right. So check our start sit videos at every position and more on this week's playlist.